for today is I should have asked how to pronounce your first name. Althea. It's Althea. Okay. Althea mm-hmm. Jacobs. And she is a no S, just one of me. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, thanks for coming on. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Oh, happy to be here, Gary. And and don't worry, everybody has trouble with my name. For some strange reason, my mom put a silent E, so it's spelled A L E. That's what threw me off. I'm like looking at and, that E. I know, right? And the only thing to... silent about me is that E in my first name, because I love to talk and I love to engage with people. I'm a real people person and I'm delighted to be on your show and happy to share whatever I can with you and your listeners today. Fantastic. So what can you tell me about metaphysics and how we can use it to manifest everything we want in life? Well, metaphysics is a huge field, right? It encompasses, meta is everything above, beyond, and encompassing physics, the physical plane, right? So it can be everything from the study of psychic phenomenon to healing, to manifesting, to working with crystals, to being a, a, a conduit for information channeling through, whether an artist, a musician, mm-hmm. a um, a writer. Um, recently for myself, I've been having this download of inspired writings that are coming through. And I'm actually about to publish um, my next book um, with a lot of these writings that have wisdoms. And some of them are like ancient wisdoms that are updated for modern times. And the whole purpose of metaphysics and being a metaphysician is, uh, for me anyway, is to be a service to others to help Mm -hmm. you figure out what do you want in your life what is your soul's purpose and to help you get the insight and guidance needed to get on that path so that you have a life that's filled with joy that's fulfilling that has this sense of awareness of something beyond the physical plane we are more than our physical bodies right and so being able to know that not just hope that is um, what working with metaphysics and a metaphysician can help you do mm. or become. That's so, like the that's like the twenty thousand foot view. Right? You know, there's so many different parts <laughs> to it, right? It's you know personal empowerment. It's developing intuition. It's healing. It's finding comfort and and, and resiliency in going through crazy situations that, that life throws at you, and knowing that you have help of angels and loved ones and guides you know, that, that are in spirit right. as well as your posse on earth here on this side of the veil. Like, I imagine like, like for most people, at least for me, like the first part, one of the hardest parts too, is just getting past the original programming that was installed in me <laughs> before. Oh yeah. Even oh, being yeah. able to juggle some of the other stuff. That comes yeah. I was, me. I was raised Catholic and, you know, so, um, Christian faith. And and when I was raised in that faith, spirituality and religion were the same thing, right? That that was my only definition of it. Mm -hmm. That's how I thought about the world, right? But then as I got out there into the world a little bit and started having experiences and learning about tools and working with other masters in their field and other practitioners in their fields, my curiosity started to develop. And then I started experimenting for myself and having experiences for myself. And I thought, all right, if this is this is a little bit different than what the religious aspect is, there's a whole personal and transpersonal aspect to spirituality. And then later on, as I got older and even more experienced, I realized it's not just transpersonal, it's interdependent, interpersonal with everybody. You know, it's sort of like that, it's kind of the catchphrase, we're all one, but you know, we have all this distinction and differentiation right now on the earth plane, you know, we, we have this physicalness and mm-hmm. I, you know, different looks, different feels, but I love science too. I have degrees in chemistry and computer science and I have this real scientific brain that I approached all of the metaphysical things with, okay, is it repeatable? Is it provable? And trying to figure out how does this work or Am I fooling myself somehow? And if somebody else is fooling me, how might they be doing it? So I was really skeptical for many years d- digging into all this stuff. And then I realized, you know, oh, quantum physics comes to the rescue because even the chair I'm sitting on and the chair you're sitting on and the listeners are sitting on, right? Quantum physics tells us it's not solid. 
you know, it's 99.9% space. And we're, and we're all that. And we're like, well, then how in the world is my butt not falling down to the floor and keep on going if we're all space, right? So there's something about consciousness and intentionality and however the grand design was designed that we have to work our way through being successful at navigating the physical before we can really embrace and start playing in the world of the metaphysical. Does that make sense? It does make sense. <laughs> so does that mean that you have to be like over 50 to get this shit? <laughs> well, I, you know what? I, I, I mean, that's no, not how I, long I, it's I, taken me to master yeah, physical. No, I, I hear you. I hear you. Well, you know, it's different for us because, you know, if you look back thousands of years or hundreds of years ago, there were mystery schools. And people yes. weren't busy trying to have their nine to five job, which is now much more than nine to five, or be an entrepreneur and run their business and work seven days a week, you know, 24 seven, right? They were able to go into the cave and go up to the mountain, go to the retreat centers and just focus on that for a while. So, and they would have their masters and their coaches and the people that would help them. For us, we don't have that, but we have the internet, <laughs> and we have Google, and we have YouTube. And so I think the younger generation is actually, you know, in a really great position to be able to accelerate and start to broaden their thinking and and have experiences. I mean, when you and I, I'm I'm, I'm guessing from your gray hair and my gray hair, we're probably <laughs> around the same age, you know, children of the 60s. Yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, we we when we were starting to study. There wasn't all this stuff online. You had to actually get your butt to Canada <laughs> or get store. your butt to get to the bookstore, go to the classes, in-person physical workshops. And, you know, it might be once in a blue moon, the master in the field that you're interested in or a really experienced practitioner in the field that you wanted to study was anywhere near you. You know, especially if you didn't live near one of the big cities, mm -hmm. you were just out of luck or you had to spend an awful lot of time and money getting to those other places to study. So I think for you and I, yeah, it took us a little longer to attain our, our wisdom just because of the logistics. Um, <laughs> but I think I think for people today, whether they're hearing this and starting their search at age 12 or at 92, it doesn't matter. The, the resources that are available today are incredible between podcasts, YouTube videos, online courses. I mean, I'm actually going to be doing my first Zoom class. I've always taught in person because I'm like, yeah, you know, that's the way to do it. And, and somebody said, well, why don't you offer a Zoom class? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I never did it. And I'm like, they're like, but you can reach people all over the world, not just in, right now I'm in Wisconsin. You know, I used to live in New York. And so in May, next month, I'm going to be offering a Zoom class on ancient wisdom for modern times. And I'm like, well, okay, how do I have to do it differently? But it's not really that much differently because it's like you and I, we're talking, it's almost like we're sitting across from each other. You know, it's, it's very, it's not like the old days of, oh, there's a camera and you make a video and you don't even know who you're talking to. Right. You know, on Zoom, you're going to see the faces. They can ask questions. You can interact. So yeah, it's a, it's a much different world right now <laughs> to make it easier and more accessible. Um, the problem though, or I mean, that's not a problem. The challenge I would say is there's also a lot of people that think, oh, I can put my stuff out there and they have no credibility, no credentials. They read a book and said, oh, I can do this. And now they're out there trying to show somebody else how to do it or make money doing, doing it. And you're like, oh gosh, you know, let's have some quality control people, you know? <laughs> so, you know, so that's, that's the only downside. So I would really strongly recommend to your listeners or watchers um, that do the research, you know, look up people's bio, you know, go to their website, do a deep dive before you invest time or money going to uh, one of their online courses or, or in-person courses. You know, if you're wondering like, why should I even bother listening to them? Go do a tiny bit of research because there are so many people that are out in the field that um, hmm, I guess it's like any field, you know, if, if, if somebody has been doing something for 10, 20, 30, 40 50 years, they're probably pretty good at it if that's how they've been making their living. If mm -hmm. it's always been this little sideline thing and they kind of dabble here and there, eh, then you don't know. But if it's how they've been making their living, you can probably assume they're good at it and give them the benefit of the doubt until they prove it otherwise. If there's somebody that's just, oh, I just went to a certification weekend and now I'm out there doing it, eh, you know, they may be very good. 
but you might want to still have a little bit of um, your filters up to see what's going on. Because energy, it's all about energy. And the energy and information are two sides of the same coin, right? So yes. whenever there's energy, there's also information. So you want to make sure the person also has an energy that's compatible with you. Um, now, now, Gary and I are originally from the Northeast. He's still there. So we might talk way too fast for any <laughs> listeners that are down in the South, right? Or, you know, and I know that, you know, but, but you can feel our energy. You can feel our heart. You can feel the intention. And there should be a part of you whenever you're listening to any podcast or watching anybody's videos that your BS detector will go off if they're not really what they're saying there are. And you should get a feeling of ringing true in your intuition. Your gut should go, yeah, that makes sense. Even if it's the first time you heard it, it should still make sense to you on some level because yeah. truths always resonate <clears throat> with us. You know what's weird though? Like I've had well-known guests where I was kind of like, no. <laughs> It was weird. It was, it's, it's an awkward yeah. thing to be in that position where I was, sure. like, you know, interviewing somebody who's really well known, but the vibe yeah. that I'm picking up from them is something different yeah. and, and, than what it is that they're selling. And, you know, my, it's, it's it's just weird. My take on that, Gary, part of it could be they just weren't the right fit and match for what you energetically needed in that moment. So perhaps they really, you know, have the bona fides you know, to, to, to have all that fame. There's also some people that were wealthy enough or had great marketing and it became this whole system of things. And you're like, Oh, wait a minute here. Uh, you know, what, um, what, what do they really have, you know, other than the name, other than great marketing? Do they do they really touch your heart and spirit and help you? Do they really know their stuff? You know, and it doesn't take very long with sitting with somebody and asking them some questions and, you know, testing them out on what they say they don't know how to do. You know, it's like um, if you're reading, trust me on this one. If you go to a tarot reader and they're there with the booklet, they flip a card and then they're reading you what each card means. Well, you can still listen but I wouldn't put a lot of stock into what they say <laughs> because they're not really using their intuition. Tools are just that. They're the tools that we focus on. So the real work, the energy and information can come through us and our intuition and the guidance and the person's guides and angels and loved ones in spirit can come through. It, it doesn't matter what the tool is, but it does matter if you don't even know how to use the tool, right? You know, would you trust a carpenter if you had to look at the instruction manual to how to run his power saw? Right. Uh, I'd be a little nervous, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and just because it's spiritual work or in the spiritual realm, and, you know, my my specialty and my focus is to be that bridge between the, the worldly, tangible, day-to-day -day person and the metaphysical woo-woo living in the clouds kind of person, right? I like straight talk. Don't mystify stuff. Anything that's been done by any guru or any master pick your field can be done by anybody else who applies themselves, understands the, the practice, understands what needs to be done and has that curiosity and sometimes the natural ability, right? You know, I, I look at um, intuition and psychic abilities as a human potential, kind of like music. I, I, I notice you have some instruments behind you there. Mm -hmm. So people that come from a musical family typically will play music. They'll either be a singer, they'll take up instruments, right? And sometimes there's those child prodigies that are born that they just can play and compose at age five, a la Mozart, mm -hmm. right? And then there's others that, oh, it's, it's part of the family tradition, so they pick up an instrument or sing and perform and they love it. There's other people that were not born into that, but they have a real interest in developing their musical traits and musical craft. And so they take lessons, they study, they learn, they try one instrument. If that doesn't work, they switch to another. And usually they get past scales. Sometimes they get stuck and say, you know what? My fingers don't work on the guitar. Let me try a piano. Oh, that's much better. It's much more spread out, right? So they're able to play there. Some people never get past scales, but most people, if they study and they practice and they stick with it, they can make beautiful music. They can truly enjoy their craft. There are some people who have no interest in making music at all. All they want to do is listen to it. 
mm-hmm. and sing along. So, okay, they don't have to go through all the study and the discipline. And then there's the weird bird here or there that just doesn't like music. And you're like, what the hell's wrong with you? How can you not like music? But anyway, you know, <laughs> that's it, right? So the human potential for music is very similar to the human potential of having intuition and having spiritual gifts and psychic skills. Mm-hmm. Think about it. Our ancestors had to have been intuitive or they would not have survived. They would not have known which cave the cyber, the saber tooth tiger was in or the bear was in and which cave was safe. The family that didn't have the intuitive knowing got it. <laughs> they got eaten right. up by them, right? They didn't survive. Their progeny did not continue through generations. So we are the product of generation of generation of generation of people who survived a pretty hostile world for the most part until until recently in modern civilization. And mm. even then, you know, are you <laughs> using your intuition to not walk down a certain street in Manhattan at the wrong time of night right. or in whatever area you live in, right? So it is that intuition is there. So in my case, I wasn't a prodigy, but I was born in a family that was highly intuitive. And I was the eldest daughter of the eldest daughter of the eldest daughter. And so I had spiritual gifts ever since I was a child. And when I shared them, they were encouraged. I was not told, oh, don't do that. That's evil. Or don't play with that. Or that's not real. That imaginary friend that you think is an angel doesn't exist. Well, how do you know? (laughs) If you can't see it, how do you know what I'm seeing isn't real? Right? That don't don't limit me. Right? (laughs) As some people would do. So, um, but I studied and I got more and more curious. And over the last 50 plus years, I've been doing a deep dive and every any time I could, I would be reading, taking workshops, studying, training, apprenticing. And I was really lucky to have studied with some amazing teachers around the world um, and then be able to now pay it forward and have clients and students and people that I'm training all over the world. And so I think for most people, if they have an interest in the metaphysics, in the intuitive field, they want to figure out what's my spiritual gift. I would always encourage them to experiment, be curious, be playful. Don't put pressure on yourself and say, okay, I'm going to hang my shingle out as Madam X and you're going to come to me and pay me $250 an hour. And I've never even opened up a a deck of cards before, or I've never learned how to read an aura. And I don't know how to communicate with spirits because I've never taken a class in mediumship. You know, be smart, but be playful. There's mm-hmm. so many ways to experiment, but but be safe. You know, make sure you're studying with somebody who's reputable, you know, and, and how do you know? The best way you know is your own intuition. What do you feel? Does your gut go, yeah, they're the real deal? Or does it go, mm-hmm, BS detectors ring and I'm not sure I want to stay with this person very much. And we all have that, Gary. How many times have you gotten onto an elevator and you wanted to start conversation because you liked the vibe of the people that were in there. Oh, hi, who are you? Where are you going? Oh, yeah, that floor, I'm going there too. Whatever, mm-hmm. right? And there's other times you get on and you're like, oh my God, I can't wait to get off this thing. And I am like, mum's the word. And I'm like looking straight ahead. Yeah. Right? And then and there's times the doors have... open. Yeah, what do you energy. do? You don't, even, <laughs> you don't even get on. You're like, oh, no, I'll get the next car. Thanks, right? We have that. We all have that. We have gut feelings about business dealings, projects. Somebody approaches you and says, hey, do you want to partner with me? Do you want to do something? What do we say? Does it feel right? We are very intellectual beings here in the Western civilization, but we also have this dynamite heart and this dynamite gut that when you can combine all three and they're all in synergy and agreement about something, that's when the magic happens. That's when real change happens. That's where that's where your life starts becoming this magical dance where everything flows and fits together and all these coincidences happen. And you're like, wow, this is this is crazy. I was just thinking about this person and they called or, geez, I was just thinking about buying this car and my car lot just got a, a, a used one that's from the dealership, you know, and it's in pristine condition, but at a used car price. And you're like, how did that happen? Well, you manifested that. Because you were in alignment with your thoughts, your heart, and your gut. So, yeah. So metaphysics is, like I said, it's it's very wide ranging, but it's really the fabric of life and, and intuition and spiritual gifts. That's our birthright. That's our human potential. It's it's available. 
And, you know, just like some people, you might be really spastic in the beginning when you try to play the piano. Oh, my God, playing scales was just like, oh, the poor teacher. <laughs> when I think back, and, and I still am not very good at piano, but I'm really good at doing psychic stuff. I'm really good at doing intuitive <laughs> stuff. I'm really good at channeling information. You know, so it's like, you know, you got to pick and choose your battles, too, right? Where, yeah. Where's your passion? Where are your gifts? And usually the things that you're interested in, the things that keep coming back and you circle back to. So like for if you're listening out there and you're like, well, geez, what, where do I even start? Well, what were the, what were the aspects that of, of the intuitive gifts and the spiritual gifts that are available in the whole um, menu of possibilities? What ones constantly catch your eye? Have you, do you notice that you keep running into healers all the time? And first it's a Reiki healer, and then it's a reconnective healer, and then it's a matrix energetics healer, and then it's an acupuncturist. And then, and you're just like, wow, I'm like surrounded by healers. And I really, I've always wondered about alternative healing. That's your clue, right? If you find yourself writing poetry or boy, songs just pop into your head. And you're like, feel like you're channeling stuff that you're hearing. And you're like, wow, this is really cool. Like the words just come and the music and chords just come. You have clear audience. You have this ability to channel spirit. And the beauty is once we open one channel, it's like sending up a radio tower. And we have the ability to change the dial. Once you're an open channel and you have that connection system all in alignment, you can tune and say, hey, I think I'd like to tune into the healing channel today. Oh, I'd like to go into the inspired writing channel tomorrow. Oh, how about going into some alternative healing? Hey, let's go explore some out-of-body stuff. You you have that ability. We have that ability. We're yes, wired yes. for that. You know, We're so used mm -hmm. to using technology. We forget that, hello, our ancestors did all this stuff before the technology even existed. Go back and read books about Atlantis and Lemuria and ancient civilizations everywhere. And you're mm -hmm. like, how the hell do they do all this stuff? You know, they talk about it. You read, you know, their their cave paintings or their their scrolls that they left behind. They they sound almost fantasy, like fantasy to us. And yet we're starting through science to prove that there's a scientific basis for why they were successful in doing what they were doing. For example, sound waves, right? Mm -hmm. One of the ancient texts talks about how the, the high priests in um, Egypt would chant and, and use instruments that would resonate a certain frequency and they would focus it on the rocks, the boulders, and sound waves literally change the relationship to gravity. And the rock that would normally weigh 20 tons is 20 pounds when it's subject to those sound waves. And you're like, okay, that was interesting. And now we're seeing that exact science of sound waves being bombarded in certain frequencies, quickening the vibrations of the molecules, which make them less dense and make them seem to counteract gravity. And you're like, okay, we still have to do it with the equipment now, but there are people I'm sure out there in some of the, you know, that have experimented or done a deep dive on sound where they're like, oh yeah, sound waves open up portals. Oh yeah, sound wave helps to channel in certain information. Uh, you know, why do you think so many, almost every religion and culture has sound chanting, singing, drumming, toning, um, instruments, whether it's the Tibetan bells and bowls, the didgeridoo of the Aborigines, the um, African drums, there's something about sound waves that affects our consciousness and the physicality of our world. And so because we, because okay. we are waves. <laughs> yeah, we are energy. So we anything that impacts I mean, energy, then we become right. a particle. So exactly. Yep. Quantum physics again, right? <laughs> well, that's, that's the, that's, I think that is the nicest thing about now. Like, like you're talking about like when I was a kid reading books, I, I had stuff like golden dawn books and like uh, some of it was just like this heavy occult stuff that was really hard to read and hard to understand sure. and all sure. that you know but you can kind of understand what they were saying now you get the gist of it but then it was like this part of my mind it's like well in reality like in a physical world this doesn't make sense 
And then, right. then, then you know, I started, you start investigating quantum physics. You're like, that does make sense <laughs> because well, you're even, by even like with a this- different set of rules. <laughs> Exactly. Well, even like for somebody who's skeptical about the sound stuff, I ask you, have you been to your dentist lately? Have you had a, a cleaning? Most dentists, uh, dental hygienists now use a sonic tool. It bombards the, the plaque with mm-hmm. sound waves. They have shoot water at the same time or, or something, but it's the sound waves of the sonic tool that vibrates the plaque to separate off the teeth. So you're like, okay. It's right there. Science is right there in your mouth. It's right there (laughs) happening Mm -hmm. for your sound waves can break up particles. So how is that any different than if somebody strikes a gong and shakes the energy around your aura and all of a sudden where you were feeling kind of depressed or funky, all of a sudden you feel better. Why? You've just quickened and that sound wave has broken any of the crusty energy that was around in your energy field and now that's gone. And you're like, oh, I feel so much better. I feel like I've been washed or cleaned, right? You know, why, why does a shower feel so good? It's not just on our body, but our whole energy field, the ionic field is getting cleansed through taking a shower. And you're like, oh yeah, right? It's like really basic principles. So once you know that there's science behind some of this stuff, you're not as afraid to experiment and say, okay, well, I know there's some truth to this. So let me just see how far it can go. And and that's just a matter of um, a curiosity, experimentation, consistency, repeating things often enough so you can see like, okay, was that just a fluke or does that happen every time I do this? Mm-hmm. Even with crystals, did you know that every crystal, type of crystal, has its own unique frequency? Yeah. So a rose quartz, if you were to measure the frequency coming off that, is different than an amethyst and different than a piece of malachite and different than a hunk of obsidian or different than a Herkimer diamond. So when people say, oh, well, the energy of this stone is good for my heart chakra with rose quartz or my third eye for amethyst or my crown chakra for a Herkimer diamond or my root chakra for an obsidian. There's actual science that shows you that these different um, minerals and crystals literally vibrate and send out a frequency just like a tuning fork which is why if you have a crystal hanging out in your room mm-hmm. or around you you might think wow you know I, there's a different vibration there it's because they're like a tuning fork or a lighthouse of energy that's bombarding it's just constantly pulsing this is my vibration this is my vibration this is my vibration and if it's one that helps to balance you heal you work on an issue for you you're going to be drawn to that And it changes over time, right? So if you're really working with broken heart issues, your boyfriend has cheated on you, your husband divorced you, you know, you're feeling alone, you might be like, oh my God, I just need rose quartz. And like, you can't get enough of it. You're wearing it, you're, you get jewelry, you're holding on to sleeping with stones under your pillow, right? Whatever, right? You you go to healing healers and they're like doing total body um, crystal alignments on you and, and crystal spreads on you. And it's almost all rose quartz, right? Well, once you're over that, right? It's like, okay, some time's gone. You know, there's some, there's a new prospect in your life. You're starting to feel love. You're feeling more self love and you realize ah, that person was a jerk anyway, and you're better off without them. You know, you're going to survive plan B can sometimes be better and, and still be filled with blessings. You might not need the rose quartz so much. You might shift to, Hmm. I think I want more now amethyst because then it's about transformation and about getting that intuitive promptings of what should I do next? And so now, then you go into your, your amethyst phase, right? So it's not that you're being um, uh, arbitrary. You literally are responding to the vibrations and on an unconscious level for, if you haven't studied and know what all the properties are, and maybe on a conscious level, if you have, you're going to be drawn to different stones and different elements at different times. Just like there's certain foods we crave Mm -hmm. at different times, right? It's like, there's some people like, oh my God, I just have to have a cheeseburger. And it's like, oh, I need the iron from the beef. I haven't had enough of that. Or, oh man, I need spinach. Oh, I, I need the potassium that's in that spinach. Now you may not know what, what the mineral is that you're missing or what it's actually doing, but there's certain times that people, you cannot 
especially when um, women are pregnant, this is, you know, it's, it's classic. A lot of the things they're craving are because there is a mineral um, need. Uh, I don't want to say it's a deficiency in them, but the, the new, the baby inside them is, is taking some of their resources. So mm -hmm. that mother is craving to supplement what the kid is, is absorbing from her. And so they'll have the weirdest cravings. And you're like, wow, I never really liked pickles before. Why am I wanting pickles now? And it's like, oh, okay. You know, there's something in the pickles that you needed. We're not used to trusting ourselves, mm -hmm. right? People will ask me all the time when I do a crystal workshop, oh, well, which crystal should I get? Which one are you drawn to? <laughs> which one keeps grabbing your eye? If you put your hands over them and just start feeling, which one pulls you like a magnet? You know, do any of them sing to you? Are you hearing anything? When you close your eyes, does one of them light up? Or, or is there an actual one that you could swear was glowing across the room? Those are signs. Those, that's your own intuition saying, that's what I need right now. That's, that's my spinach. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. But it's, it's happens to be in a mineral form. But man, we, you know, life becomes a lot more interesting when you have some more of these tools and you realize it's normal, natural, and it makes life easier when you're that much in tune with your own energy field. But you know what, Gary, half of us, we're not self-aware enough to even get through our week, right? We wake up, we do our little chores, we get ready for work, we go to, we commute to our job, we're there all day, on the way home, maybe we stop and run a few errands. We get back home. We have dinner, do some more chores. Maybe we relax. Maybe we, we socialize a little. We do that day in and day out during the week. The weekend, maybe Saturday is your big day for chores and errands. Sunday might be the day to relax. And if you if you go to worship, you go worship. You'll hang out with friends or family and get ready for Monday and you start all over again. And you're kind of in this, this um, what is it they all saying? It's uh, lather rinse, repeat, right? You just do that day after day after day. You're not even stopping to ask yourself fundamental questions like, why am I doing what I'm doing? Do I like this job or did I just find myself in that? Am I enjoying my life? Am I doing the hobbies and finding the artistic and creative expressions that really feed my soul? They're not even asking those questions for the most part. Mo many people don't get around to that for quite a while until they have a crisis or something that makes them have to look in the mirror and go, oh, crap, I got to make some changes, don't I? Right? They don't even look at their life until something happens. Well, they're certainly not going to be looking at the finer, um, more uh, lighter aspects of their energy field mm -hmm. to be in tune with, oh, I feel like I need oatmeal today because I need more magnesium. Right? Right? They're lucky if they even have can grab breakfast before they're out the door to get to their job, or they plan on grabbing, you know, uh, a um, what are the what do they call those uh, McDonald's sandwiches, the McMuffins or whatever on the way to the office, right? So, a big part of our job, yours is, you know, you've been podcasting for years, so you already been doing the wake up call. A, a big part of podcasting, and I think especially any that are um, having to do with human potential and spirituality and transformation and handling change and resiliency and all those things. It's it's about being the wake up call and challenging the listener and challenging the person to say, why are you doing what you're doing? What could you be doing that would bring you more joy, more peace, more fulfillment in your life? Have you even asked those questions of yourself? And if you have, what's stopping you? What are the blocks? What tools or resources do you need to help you get there faster so that each day you can be taking one step, even if it's a baby step, in the direction of the things that you are most passionate about doing? I believe that everybody has a soul's purpose, that they came in for certain pieces of the puzzle that they were looking for or needed to assemble, and that we have the challenge to become the full measure of our creation then the world here has all these distractions and all of these other, and the distractions can be fun ones. They can be interesting ones, but they can still take us sometimes off our path of what we had intended to do. If we go on vacation and you have it all planned out, you're going to go here, 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 here. And then on like the second day, it's like you talk to somebody and they're like, oh, no, you should go check out this, that, and the other thing. Well, now you have to check with your intuition. Do you say, hmm, do I stick with what I planned? Or do I take a chance because it feels right to go on this adventure instead? You know, uh, most of us love um, 
the sci-fi movies, right? The the uh, Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings, the Harry Potter, they all speak to our soul because they're all about the hero's journey. It's all about somebody, an ordinary person, and sometimes a less than ordinary person, right? Who finds the strength within them, the courage within them to answer the call to adventure, to answer the call to be more, to try more, to stretch themselves. We love those kind of movies typically in our society. We love them. We relate to the characters. The whole reason we love them so much is because they are a roadmap for us. They're meant to be the inspiration mm -hmm. to, okay, maybe you don't have a Hogwarts near you, but mm -hmm. there's certainly things that you can study that can be like magic in your world. And whether that's music or art or metaphysics, there's places to go. There's things to try, right? So I, a big part of who I am is, is to be that bridge, to be that wake up call, and then to be the person to help them, you know, be the guide. We, when we are in our older years and we have the wisdom and we have the experiences, it is incumbent upon us to pay it forward. It's our duty. It's our legacy to, to take all of the wisdoms and all the tools that we've accumulated over the years. Oh my God, the tool belts we have, right? It's like, how many courses did you take that later? You said, why the hell did I take this course? I don't know, but if I ever need it, I got that tool. I got it. Somebody needs mm -hmm. to know about that. I can talk about it. I can show them. I can help them. I think that's part of the, the calling. When, when you're called to be a teacher, when you're called to be somebody who is of service, we want all those tools, but then once we have it, it's we're beholden to make them available to others, to help others, to pay it forward for all the people that helped us get through our trials, our our questions, our times of uh, crisis and faith questions and life questions and turmoils and challenges and disasters. All the ones that helped us get through, they're not around most likely, but we're here to help those next generations get through. And so I love, like I said earlier, I love that you've been doing this podcast for years. I love that you're in that human potential movement, that you're helping to share information, planting seeds. That can be the first start for somebody. Just even broadening their mind to know that the topic exists. And it's not always just woo-woo fluffy stuff that like, oh God, I can't even, I, how could I take this course? Because I could never tell anybody I'm taking it. That's how it used to be. It's yeah. not that way anymore. Not that way well, anymore. Now all the information too. Like what took me like 50 years to learn could be condensed down to about 50 pages of usable. <laughs> right. Like if you really look yeah. at like exactly yeah. what it is and what you need to know. Yeah. It, it can be really condensed down to, to a pretty short amount of, of information. Yeah. But then, you know, at that point, though, it's just you're still like in that information phase. <laughs> That's yeah. the only thing. Because there's like the information <laughs> yeah. phase, and then there's like the experimental phase, and then there's like sort of like yep. the realization phase of it. Yeah. So, so that kind of brings up a good point. So, if if you are somebody who's listening, who's like, this is all kind of interesting, but where do I start, or how do I start? I don't. You know, you you say it's a human potential to have an intuition, but I don't know if I have one. Developing your intuition and working with tools that allow your intuition and how your own process works for you, that's usually one of the best places to start. Because if you can learn what your own yes, no symbols are, um, and, and a really simple thing you can do is just put your hands on your, your solar plexus, right? Where you get your gut feel. Mm -hmm. Put your hands there and think of something that you know, if you asked a question, if I found a crisp $100 bill sitting on the hood of my car in an empty parking lot, would I take that $100 bill and put it in my pocket? That's probably the yes for most of us, right? Um, that, or geez, oh, I love puppies and somebody has a new puppy and they offer me a chance to play with that puppy. Would that be a yes? Oh yeah, that's definitely a yes. Notice what that feels like. Definite yeses. Do you have a favorite food? If somebody offers you that food and you're hungry, would you say yes to it? Oh yes, okay feel really feel where what does that feel like to you is it an expansion feeling is it warm is it is it tingling does it feel magnetic like it's you're, you're being pulled to that thing right that's a yes 
and then flip it around. Ask the same set of questions for something that you know the answer's a no. Like, if I saw a dollar bill that was covered with pee in the gutter, would I pick it up? That's just not a no. That's a hell no, right? I'm like, oh, <laughs> God. You know, I'm not going to touch that thing, right? Or if I'm allergic to a food and you offer it to me, am I going to eat it? Oh, no, no. That's a no, right? So you can go through your own mind again because do you? each person's different where they have really strong yeses and noes in their lives, right? And then feel what that's like. And for me, uh, but, my but no is a But, but there's those times, though, like, like I know with me, though, where I get a different feeling. <laughs> it's not either of those feelings. <laughs> Well, but then that's learning, like, where do you hear something? So, yeah. like, the feeling should be, you can't really fool your gut, right? So, if you're noticing, um, if you're asking a question, should I do X? And, and you get the the signal for a definite yes. I feel warm in my gut. I feel this spent, this this energy expanding. I, I feel lightness all around me. I feel like I'm being pulled in that direction. You can't fake those feelings. You might mentally try to convince yourself, but you can't force the feeling. Same thing with the opposite. If you start to feel the no symptoms, the, oh, it feels like an ice pick just went into my gut and it's cold and it's clammy and it's dark. And it's like, I, I just feel like I'm, I, I can't get far enough away from that. You can't fake that either. Even if you're trying to rationalize why you still want to do that, if you're paying attention to what your actual body wisdom is saying, what your gut is telling you, and how do you get there? You practice for things that are not life and death and super duper important. You know, you start with the little things, you know, go to a restaurant and ask yourself, which thing on the menu will I feel the best after eating? You know, and yes, 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 no. Okay, so you have a couple of options. Which is this is the highest choice? No, no, yes. Oh, that's the one I feel drawn to. You don't have, you know, our our intellect should be an advocate for our intuition, not an adversary. And there's whole courses I teach and lots of others teach of how to get that partnership where instead of your intuition saying turn left and your intellect saying, you said turn left, well, we're gonna go right just to make sure, right? How many times have we done that, right? We're not, we don't train ourselves to listen to our intuition until we do. We don't train ourselves to understand that we have certain body wisdoms. Again, it you know it unconsciously every time an elevator opens. Do you say next car? Do you step in and be quiet? Or do you go in and engage with the people in there? Your intuition, that gut feel is what's telling you about the energy of those people there and how to proceed. We live our lives by it. We just don't pay attention to it most of the time until we do. And then once you do, wow, it's more powerful because then, then, oh man, the, the flow can happen. The interactions, the synchronicities, you don't, you don't find yourself in trouble too often um, until you don't listen. And then you get the subtle reminder. I'll share a funny story with you. Um, I have a dog. His name is Flash. He's a Belgian Malinois. And he is smarter than smart. Um, he used to, he was on TV at once upon a time. He's done bite work. He's he was the bat dog for the Green Bay Booya, which is a, a local baseball team. So like when when the the batter would drop the bat and, and run, he'd run out from the dugout, grab the bat, bring it back to the dugout. Um, yeah, really smart dog. Um, so he's so smart. He knows how to open every door to get in and out of the house, including the sliding glass door. So if you don't want flash in or out of the house, you got to lock it. But anyway, so one day um, 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 he's out in the side yard and I'm doing dishes and I can see through the, the kitchen window that he opened up my sliding glass door going out uh, outside or to get back in. And I thought to myself, and it was my little intuitive prompting, oh, I should probably go close that door. Now it's the middle of winter still, but I'm like, okay, what, what the heck is out there? So I put it off. I didn't do it. 10 minutes later, I'm standing in my kitchen and a ground squirrel goes running by me inside the house. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so we had, I had forgotten. We had a little bit of a warm up. Um, and so some of the animals came out of hibernation. And even though it's in the middle of the backyard and you know, I had to come up on the deck and the stairs, this little sucker came in the open open door and it was in my house. <laughs> Took me a while to get him out. I had to lure him out by lay, lay, laying little um, seeds <laughs> they were uh, that I had. And 
kind of coaxing him back to the front, the, out the door. But my intuition had told me, right? But my conscious mind, even, even after paying attention to my intuition for so long, and especially when I get intuitive um, promptings for something important, I absolutely, I am almost obedient. You know, I would use that word. I, I really pay attention. But for sometimes for little things, we still get those promptings. Those are the ones I tend to fall short on. Like, oh, maybe I should go close that door. And I talked myself out of it. Hmm. Part of it was laziness. Part of it is I couldn't I couldn't understand why are you want me to close the door? It's only open this wide. You know, he just opened it enough and squeezed himself through. It's in the middle of the winter. What could possibly come inside the house? A squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> So. Hmm. so do you think that like, like that kind of situation you know you can understand the whole intuition and stuff yep. but sometimes i wonder now you know when i think about things just as energy and information you know yep and we're just well and we do have the ability to, to choose right. which information and where we want to go we also have the ability sure. to to jump far ahead, jump backwards, jump back right, here. Right. Like, like we have yeah. all this flexibility, you right. know, in that situation. Do you think that maybe you just manifested the squirrel? No, because <laughs> the squirrel wasn't even in my conscious awareness. Because if I thought to myself, oh, I should close this so a squirrel doesn't come in here or a bird doesn't fly in here. Then I probably would have said, oh, okay, I should go close that. Because now mm -hmm. I had more of the intellect backing up the intuition. In this case, it was just the prompting, but I blew it off. I just blew it off. You know, ideally, when we're at our strongest, we have a combination of our intellect being in alignment and an agreement with what our heart is telling us, what we're feeling, as well as that gut feeling and prompting of the intuition. Um, so if the three are fighting in some way, then you have to figure out, well, which is more reliable. And that's where you want to start paying attention. Um, uh, a fun exercise to do if you've never done it is keep an intuition log for about mm -hmm. a month. So every time you get an intuitive prompting, you open up your journal, you write in the first column, what that prompting is the second column, you write what you did about it. If you did anything. And then the third column is what was the result? You just do that for a month. And at the end of the month, when you read back, you're going to notice a pattern that when you listened to your intuition, good things happen or you avoided bad stuff. When you didn't listen, sometimes you missed out on something good or you encountered something bad. And so it could be really simple things like being back in that, that area for you. It might be, should I take the, the Garden State Parkway or the Turnpike? And you get the feeling, oh, I should take the turnpike. And you're like, hell no, too many tolls, too many trucks. I don't want to do that, right? And and so you're like, all right, I'm going to, uh, no, you know, and, and so that was your prompting. You write it down. I was supposed to go on the turnpike. And second column, you write, I didn't do it. I don't like trucks. So I went on the Garden Parkway instead, Garden State Parkway instead. What was the result? There was a freak deer hit on the Garden State Parkway and it was closed. And I wound up being late for where I was going because I had to take some local roads. Right. Sometimes <laughs> wow. it can be, right? I mean, have, you, have you know what's funny kind of, about, about happen, your right? example, though, is I cannot use the turnpike or the parkway, actually. Oh, yeah. Because no, <laughs> I, 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 I owe Easy Pass $8,000. Oh, no, <laughs> dude. <laughs> how did, how did, do that once, you, made, once it's they, past they a certain a, amount don't they go they, after they, you they, they made a mistake and they refused to fix it <laughs> so now i just don't oh my god <laughs> oh my gosh all right so you're you're stuck on the backwards forever but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the scenic routes have all the adventure right so well uh, like another example that might come up is like let's say you're filling your gas your gas up at a, a mini at a uh, station and you get a prompt and go into the mini mart and you're like, I don't got to pee. I don't need anything. Screw it. I'm in a hurry. I'm not going to go in. And then, so that's what you put down in your journal. You say, okay, I got the prompting to go into the mini mart. All right, let's flip it around. In this case, let's say I didn't need anything, but I went in because I got that calling. And there was a friend of mine from high school I haven't seen in a gazillion years. 
and we got a chance to connect and we went out to lunch. And I would never have known that they were there if I hadn't listened to it, mm -hmm. right? So the, the point of this journal is at the end of a month, you're going to notice those patterns. And what happens is your intellect, instead of being the adversary, trying to talk you out of doing whatever the intuition is, is prompting you, it becomes the advocate. It becomes the, hey, what do you have to say about this intuition? It, it oh, did you mention something here? Oh, let's, let's pay attention. Let's run it through. Can we see any reason not to? You know, is there anything else that we know why we shouldn't listen to it? No, because now you've proven yourself to be trustworthy. You know, I've seen the pattern. I know it for myself to be true, that when I listen to my intuition, good things happen or I avoid bad. And when I don't, unexpected things happen that can sometimes be bad or I miss out on something good. Once that becomes your knowing, it makes it really easy for that partnership of your intellect, your heart, and your gut to happen. And then you're much more congruent in your life. Things flow a lot better. And you're opening yourself up for many more opportunities than if you're trying to just figure it out by using just your brain alone. Or if you're somebody who is just, well, I go by my heart and I go whatever, regardless of does it make sense or not. Or somebody who's only going by their gut, but you haven't proven it to anything yet. And so you're constantly fighting yourself on making those steps in your journey. Does that make sense? It makes complete sense because now your mind looks realizes it has other tools to use. So it's going to do the logical right. thing and use those tools. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and trick. and the more you use, the more you use it, it's like, a, it's like exercising, right? It's like mm -hmm. your intuition muscle. The more you exercise any muscle, the stronger it gets. You can't overuse it. If you've never, if, if, if you haven't even, if you haven't even um, jogged a few blocks saying you're going to go run a marathon is just stupid. Right. It's like, what are you doing? You're setting yourself up for failure. Right. So you don't jump into deciding where is the next house I should buy and spend five hundred thousand dollars or which job should I take? Because I want to leave this job, but I have no other training in that field. You know, you're not going to want to leave um, leave a really important decision like that, a life changing decision to your intuition alone you want to have that partnership and you also want to have it been something proven to you so that you can have that confidence when you get a feeling to move to wisconsin by the way <laughs> i got one of those i'm like oh god you have a sense of humor but by this time in my life i was really clear i know when the voice of spirit is talking to me i know when i'm getting a clear signal from my intuition that's ringing true in my heart that makes sense to my head. And although I lived the vast majority of my life on the East Coast, living in New York and Connecticut and even in Europe for a um, couple of years and lived, in, and lived on the other coast in LA for a little while, I was totally shocked when I, I got a loud and clear, check out the Midwest. And I was like, really? But you know what? It's really cool here. It's the quality and the pace of life is a lot calmer. The cost of living is like one third less. I mean, it's crazy how cheap things are compared to New York or LA. And the people are nice and the nature is beautiful. And I'm like, huh, okay. And I've had opportunities here that I may not have had if I had stayed on either coast. Mm. And so, you know, I had the the courage in a lot of ways to say, I'm making a major life move that most people and most of my family and friends were like, Wisconsin? Really? And then I tell them about all these things and they're like, really, Wisconsin? Who knew? Like, I've seen more talented musicians and comedians that are doing their U.S. tour here in Wisconsin, in Green Bay and in Appleton, than I ever did when I was living in New York or L.A. Mm. More Broadway shows that are on their road tour and mm -hmm. the, the quality of the performances is astounding. And I'm like, wow. And it's easy. It's in and out. There's no traffic. Parking's free or cheap, you know, meals before and after are easy to get to and cheap. And you're like, wait, huh? You know? So anyway, it's, it, when, when you develop that, 
where it really works for you, where you feel that partnership within yourself of that, that body, mind, and spirit connection, that head, heart, and gut connection, and you know it is a reliable partnership, you are then willing to take on much larger life changes, career changes, partner changes, when you get the promptings, because you know it's a proven entity. And so I would say start small to build up that muscle and build your capacity and build your trust in yourself and in the partnership that you develop between your intellect, your heart, and your gut. It is so worth doing it because then what's possible becomes that much more um, expanded. You have a larger range of choices of things that you can do and places you can go and things you can become when you have that strength of those things working together. Absolutely. Yeah. When everything's in sync. I've always had a little bit of a tough time getting it all yeah. together well, at you the know, same that's, time. That's where, that's where sometimes the um, recreational uh, aids can help us because it it um, occasionally, um, when I have uh, experienced them, I notice it it takes the fear away and allows us to be a little bit more curious, playful, experimental, and then we can notice what we notice, and we're like, oh, okay, this isn't so bad, you know. Like if you've never gone. Um, swimming in a lake, a mountain lake, because you're like, your intellect goes, hell no, it's 40 degrees. I'm not doing that. But in the moment when you're kind of being one with nature and you're sitting around a campfire and everyone says, Hey, let's go jump in the lake. You're like, well, what the hell? Why not? Right. Mm -hmm. And after you come out, you're like, wow, that was invigorating. It didn't kill you. And it actually shifted something in your consciousness by allowing yourself to do that. You know? So, you know, there's, there's lots of ways out there, but meditation is a way. There's sound tools. I'm a big, I'm a big lover and fan of the Monroe Institute uh, and the Monroe Sound Sciences. Um, the Monroe Institute is in um, Virginia, in the Blue Ridge Mountains, and they're a consciousness institute that has used the science of sound waves to help expand consciousness and facilitate experiences. And I'm like, okay, you don't need to take the recreational um, aids if you're able to put on headphones or put your speakers on and listen to sound waves that were designed to help shift your consciousness specifically in the areas you'd like to explore. So there's, there's so many options now and kind of circling back to how we started, Gary, it's like in this day and age, you know, you don't have to go up to the Himalayas to a mystery school <laughs> right. to find it's the easier. answer, right? <laughs> you know, you don't have to follow, you know, Baba G on, in India, right? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no disrespect to anybody who has a guru in India. You know, you don't have to do that. You know, you can find them online. You know, you can read their books and watch their podcasts and be part of their transmissions through Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. So it, things are so much more accessible now. And, and we have so many more tools, enlightenment tools, you know, that people can play with very safely for the most part, you know, they, they, they're made that way, you know, the, the, um, the versions of what's available, you know, that you can buy online, so to speak, is uh, it's, it's a little watered down, you know, for safety reasons, you know, mm -hmm. they don't want to have you have a, a, a full blown, you know, equivalent of a peyote experience through sound waves, and then you're going to try and drive a car. No, they don't want that to happen, right? Mm -hmm. So they, there's certain things you can do and not, but you can at least get your feet wet. You can experiment. You can go see, you know, what really what resonates with you. Our language is a clue. What, what's resonance about? Energy compatibility, mm -hmm. right? So what do we resonate with? What are we? called to right oh, our language is so full of the clues if you pay attention <laughs> <laughs> that's the trick paying attention yeah. if you pay attention enough you might be surprised at what you'll find yeah 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 awesome so i want to thank you for coming on and before we wrap sure. up though where can people find you and get your book sure um yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have yeah a couple of things I'd love you to look me up. So I have my own podcast I'm about to launch and you can find the trailer on YouTube and sign up for it. So once the episodes start hitting, you can listen. Um, it's called Spiritually Speaking with Althea. 
And my name, Althea, is spelled a little funny. It's A-L-E-T-H-E-A. And you can also go to my website, which is altheajacob.com. And there you'll see different events. Um, so I have a Sedona retreat. I'm going to be leading in June. There'll be information about that. It's going to be called The Path to Empowerment, Accessing Your Intuitive Abilities and Developing Your Spiritual Gifts. So it's kind of very much in alignment with what we've been talking about tonight. Mm -hmm. And then um, in May next month, I'm going to be doing an Ancient Wisdoms for Modern Time Zoom. That's going to be my first one. So if you want to come join me and see how, how that all turns out, feel free to do that. And my book, the big news is um, my book, A Portal to Potential, is going to be coming out um, within the next, um, by the end of the month. It'll be That's out awesome. on Amazon and on Kindle. Yeah, I'm in the final um, uploading and proofing and all that kind of stuff now. Um, but it's that book is meant to help inspire people and connect them to sources of how they can channel and how they can be inspired and questions to ask that will shift their consciousness and and it's 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 meant to be a tool. And and I even say it in the book. I don't care if you use it like a spiritual fortune cookie where you hold a question in your mind and you crack it open mm -hmm. and you come to some inspired writing or a question that spirit asked that I wrote down and you ponder that and that's all you ever do. I don't care, you know, or if you read it from cover to cover and kind of go for the wave of the ride. I believe that anything that is that we bring into creation, whether it's a song, a piece of artwork inspired writings, when we experience those, when we listen to the song or we read or hear those books or we look at those paintings, they are portals to the source that that artist or that author or that musician was in touch with. And we can kind of back channel to it and say, okay, now I'm here at that source. Maybe I'm not a musician. Maybe I'm not an author. But what do I need? What do I want to bring forth? What does my soul want to bring forth? That's what that book's about. So cool. it's called A Portal to Potential. So, um, and um, all the proceeds from that book are being donated to the scholarship fund for the Monroe Institute. That's my way of paying it forward for their Consciousness Institute being that my go-to place over the last 30 years, whenever I had something I needed to sort out, they were there. And so it's my little um, gift to pay that forward. Um, but it's still, I would love for mm -hmm. lots of people to to enjoy it and have it be a benefit to them. Awesome. And I'm so glad you had me on your show. Thanks so much. <laughs> I'm, I'm still a new, even though I'm an old lady, I'm a newbie when it comes to podcasts and getting all this <laughs> stuff out there and using social media. I'm like, I didn't even know that Twitter got a new name. It's like somebody said, oh, do you have an X account? I'm like, what the hell's an X account? I, I don't know. Instagram? No. Oh, oh uh, but now I do. You know, <laughs> YouTube channel. Yes, there's a YouTube channel with my name on it now. I'm like, oh, wow, this is cool. You know, and TikTok. I'm making these little teeny TikTok uh, little videos to be <laughs> information that are out there so uh it, it's funny I, I can be enthusiastic because it's really all new to me but it's really exciting because it's so much easier now to be able to share stuff and output stuff than it ever has been in my whole life and i'm i'm kind of glad i somebody dragged me kicking and screaming to the technology <laughs> age so i can use these wonderful tools well, and thanks so much for having me on Gary. Definitely, really work, appreciate it. definitely working with the right people to get you out there that's for cool. sure Oh, well, All thank right. you so much. So, I appreciate that. I, I, I Anytime. Don't, you want <laughs> I don't have an outro anymore. Um, okay. So, hey, can I come if, back when I actually have my book published and we can talk a little bit about that? Can. Absolutely. All right. I'd love to do that. That would be cool. Uh, <laughs> thank you. If any of my listeners, the, the, I'll put your links in the notes of this episode so they can find you. And if people want awesome. to reach me, they can email me at everythingimaginable2020 at gmail.com. At least for now, maybe one day I'll get another <laughs> website. I'm not really sure. And thank you for listening.